Hi folks, so I thought it would be useful to record just a short video talking about open source um, software, free and open source software, and how it relates to secure software development. So there's an important point to start with is that every company or person that develops software that they happen to release open source um, will be following whatever software methodology, development methodology that they've chosen to use. That may or may not include all of the security best practices you know that we've been talking about. So it may or not may or may not include doing static analysis and fuzz testing and detail testing at every stage of the development. Um, whether or not they do that, um, the fact that they're putting this, the source code out there uh, is I guess what makes it open source software or free and open source software. And as soon as you're interacting with the community in that way where you're sharing your source code, what um, you know the dynamics change a little bit because other people can see the source code. And you know if you are a um, free free software advocate like myself, then that's a good thing because you know what's happening on your system. And you know it's a power to the people, and you know you can, you actually can um, basically benefit from everyone's willingness to um, contribute, and um, and a lot of really great stuff happens because it's open source. Um, the whole Linux ecosystem is, you know, thanks to this ethos of kind of willingness to share the work that's been put in, and benefit from the work of each other a lot of the software that is open source has been um, developed by companies um, and it's part of their... Um, so sometimes it's because they're, you're developing it as part of um, something that supports their wider the business and there's no um, downside to them sharing it so that other people can kind of also benefit from those things. Um, and for example Linux Kernel has people working at you know, Google and Novell and Red Hat and a whole bunch of other companies, um, Intel, and you know the, there are people that work full time on the Linux kernel, for example. So, either way, the source code's out there, um, so the community can can interact with those these projects by um, potentially when they find a bug, they can or or propose a, an improvement, they can basically put that forward. And discuss that with the, the project. So we say, well, I suggest that you do this, or actually, I found us a problem. Here's this is what the problem is that I've identified. And then a developer, um, it could even be the same person because it's all open source. Could basically say, well, I found a problem and I fixed it. So they write some code, um, and then that review, that that patch, that difference, that source code changes that have been made is reviewed by the community um, and depending on the way the project works it might be reviewed by the community as a whole or it might require someone within the inner team to review it before it's accepted um, but basically it's reviewed and it gets tested and then if it ex if it meets the um, criteria of that particular project they'll basically um, you know might accept those changes but they might tell you to go and make some changes to the um, code that you've written. So this is not up to our standards, for example, go and go and change it. Or they might just say, Look, we'll take care of it. We, we're not happy with your patch, but we can see you've got an actual problem and we're going to fix it. Um, eventually that fix gets committed into the code base and as part of the, the code. Uh, and then, you know, software gets released. So when it's a security bug, um, this is still the way that it works. Um, some projects will treat security bugs differently and others won't. So some will have a way of um, kind of allowing you to communicate with them not publicly so that they can fix security problems before they're kind of like told to the community. Other um, projects will use a full disclosure policy. So for example, OpenBSD, which is an open source Unix operating system, um, I guess similar to, to to Linux, uh, but it's a separate project. Um, uh, similar in this, in that it's a kernel, um, and so free 
uh, OpenBSD actually um, has a full disclosure policy and they do um, code reviews on an ongoing process and they are proud of the fact that there's been very few security problems and they're very proactive about security. Um, so Linus's law, which actually has nothing to do with Linus Tovolds, um, the creator of Linux, it was actually proposed by Eric Raymond, um, but he calls it Linus's law, and it is that given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. So that's a controversial position, but it's basically saying that open source software is more secure because everyone can see the code, and if there are problems, we would notice it. Um, but it does require knowledgeable, in-depth code review to actually find security problems. And, um, and that does happen in some open source development communities, like OpenBSD, for example. Uh, but maybe not all, especially if you look at a project like the Linux kernel. They are very pro, you know, they're very, very strict standards about getting software into the kernel. Um, and if you spend any time on the Linux kernel mailing list, you'll see they're absolutely brutal in their code reviews. Like, you have to, it has to be very, very good for your code to make it into the kernel. And they do, you know, insist on, you know, quite a lot of justification for your approaches and testing and the rest of it. Um, but if you think about the number of millions of lines of code that's in the Linux kernel, um, when's the last time someone reviewed a specific, like, function in there um, that hasn't been touched for, you know, 25 years, for, for, for example? Um, uh, has the Linux kernel been around 25 years? Um, that, you know, if there are, I'm going to guess that it's about that old, but, um, you can fact check me. Um, the, you know, if there are bugs that are in there, um, then they, um, yeah, they need to be, they, they won't necessarily be found. And so that you have things like, um, Heartbleed and other kinds of like um, shell shock, which was a bash um, vulnerability. I think bash was the bash vulnerability was present in bash for 25 years before it was discovered. Um, but you know, because these are really obscure ways of misusing the software, um, and yeah, it can be quite um, hard to to actually review um, code that someone else has written. But it's certainly easier to do it because the source code is open source. And, um, you know, maybe more projects should be more proactive in doing code reviews. But to be honest, um, if people want to be doing some software development uh, and they're doing it, if they're doing it on a voluntary basis, for example, it's unlikely they're going to volunteer to do uh, like a code review of some code that's not changed in a long time. Um, people much would rather be writing like fancy new features and things. But that's why it's good that we do have um, larger companies that are contributing code because they're more likely to do things like that. Um, so closing source code doesn't prevent attacks. Um, the attackers know the sorts of things to look for. You can do dynamic like runtime um, attacks against software regardless of whether you have source code. So we, you know, we've looked at fuzz testing in a previous topic, um, you know, you can do fuzz testing and find bugs in software and you don't need the source code to do that. Uh, but it does make it easier, to be fair. If you have the source code, you can write some good test cases. Static code analysis is easier if you've got the source code because static analysis, source code static analysis tools want to look at source code. So, you know, um, you can run those tools to look for, um, like, it can detect things like a likely buffer overflow vulnerability, for example, if you've got the source code. Um, and, um, but you can also reverse engineer the software and then run it through those same tools. So, you know, you it doesn't stop it. There's also binary static analysis techniques that you can use where you um, can do analysis of a binary anyway. You don't need to have a the source code. Um, and there are, um, yeah, there's, there's, being open source does, doesn't like basically, um, 
It doesn't prevent the attacks by being closed source, put it that way. And if you're open source, you can benefit from the effort that other people are willing to, to put in. So Linux kernel development um, process is very picky about code quality. Um, they do, Linus himself um, believes that security bugs should be treated similar to other bugs. They do have uh, a mechanism by which you can tell them about security bugs kind of privately, but as a whole, mostly all the development happens in uh, basically in the clear. You can watch this, you know, if you go on uh, to the Linux um, kernel mailing list, you can watch them do the development and, well, you can watch them communicate with each other. And, um, you know, it's huge, uh, you know, uh, you know, as a traditional mailing list, you can sign up with your email and you'll just, your email will just be flooded with copious amounts of all these communications. So, but you can also just look on the archives online. There's, you know, it's, you know, just beware your inbox if you're going to sign up for it. Um, but, you know, each of the different communities, so for example, the Linux um, security um, subsystem, so the security components within the kernel, for example, have their own mailing list. Um, and you can kind of watch them and how they interact and how the code reviews work. Uh, but, you know, as, as you are probably aware, you know, a Linux distribution is made up of lots of pieces of software. <coughs> and each of those um, are developed basically individually. Um, and so you have stable distributions that are very stable. They, pro they, they conduct quite an extensive review um, of the software that they're, they're um, releasing kind of generally. Uh, whereas you can use community versions and that all be kind of cutting edge uh, newest version of all the software kind of thing. And then the people who kind of manage the repositories um, and individual projects kind of like control what software ends up in there. Um, so, and, and the, the distros kind of maintain all of the updates that apply. And then the way that the security updates are um, kind of push to users and everything is all via the, the distribution themselves and so they kind of track that stuff and push it and some will actually flag whether or not each software update is security sensitive or not and other distros won't it'll all just be updates um, so obviously you need to make sure that you're using the most up-to-date version um, so yeah there's lots of open source Kind of community involvement um, generally with open source development. So smaller projects might not follow a formal development methodology, um, and but many projects do have their own approach, usually including lots of code review and hopefully testing. Um, usually, you see that you'll have um, someone will make a pull request, like on GitHub, for example. Someone will make some changes, they'll do a pull request which will show them these are the changes I want you to accept into your project. And then they might turn around and say, have you tested it? Um, and then they'll look through, um, you know, whoever's maintaining the project will um, look at the changes that have happened, write to a manual code review, uh, potentially do static co code analysis depending on the project. Um, and, you know, whatever level of testing is required for that test, that project as well before the code is accepted into the um, project itself. And it might be worked on within a branch until it's kind of ready for a release and then merged into master, for example. Um, so, you know, mo a lot of projects have their own development guidelines to help to ensure that there's rigor. Um, you know, but there is, it is often more fun to add a feature than it is to make sure things are secure. So you do get a lot of people kind of proposing new things and people that are kind of maintaining projects have to say, hang on there, have you actually tested this thing? Um, slow down, let's have a look, make sure it's secure and everything. And then if it is, then we'll accept it into the project. So um, with my um, free and open source software advocate hat on, I'll say that beyond, you know, really security is, um, can be or could not be secure with open source software. It's not being open source or closed source doesn't really inherently make it more or less secure. Um, those are mostly up to the practices of the project and um, 
whether you know you're writing good code. Um, but it does um, give uh, it, it's it means that you're sharing and other people are benefiting from the work that you're doing, and that um, you know if your um, business doesn't rely on exclusively having access to your software, which is almost always, you know, it's very very rarely the case that the exclusive access to some source code is what drives your business, then um, open source is the way to go because you're able to kind of contribute to everyone else and um, kind of everyone can benefit from the effort that you're putting in because you're benefiting from everyone else as well. So think about all the libraries that you use when you write software um, and be grateful of the fact that other people are also sharing the code that they've written. Um, so, okay, so Windows versus Linux or open source software, which is more secure? Well, it's complicated. Uh, either could be secure. Linux systems, like a stable Linux distro, is a, can be a very, configured to be a very secure system. Windows um, can be configured to be a very secure system. Um, vulnerabilities are discovered in both of those systems um, uh, occasionally, and you need to make sure that you're applying software updates uh, and aware of any potential problems that are there. Um, Linux has basically more security features and extensions. Um, it's considered very secure. Um, you know, the Linux kernel Linux is running most of the cloud um, services that you use. All of the you know most popular websites like Facebook and Google, <clears throat> Amazon. You know they're all running mostly Linux servers. Even Microsoft have some servers that run Linux. Um, so you know, um, but Microsoft are also. Um, can't really fault them at the moment in terms of their software development practices. Um, they're doing much better now um, since the, you know, SDL, the secure development lifecycle, and their current approach to software development is very methodical. They think about security really carefully in their development process, which is, to be fair, can't be said about every open source project. Um, they have a more formal development methodology. Um, but again, you can configure a Windows system to be insecure. Um, so the answer is, you know, maybe. <laughs> so um, thanks, I hope you found that um, interesting and helpful and a little bit of insight into how open source development and communities work.